Hello YouTube, Grindog Chef here, welcome to Squad. This video is going to be a very simple, basic, beginner's guide to the game for anyone that's just received or just bought the game after the free weekend slash sale or any new players that just want a bit of guidance. It's not going to be too in-depth guys, it's just going to be simple pinpoint things that you need to know for when you get into your first game. So what is squad? Obviously you can answer that question by looking on the Steam website, the Steam page and reading the description but basically it's a very stimulative combat shooter where you and your community work together to capture objectives, reduce the enemy's tickets like in Battlefield for example and win the game. It is that simple but it is also very complex when you get into it. So, let's discuss a few things about actual game mechanics. When you first get into your first game, or when you get into a few games that you've already been in and you haven't understood what HABs are, FOBs are, radios, rally points and ammo crates, for example, do and are, practically I'm here to tell you now. So, as you can see, HABs are also FOBs, so HABs are an important FOB deployable that allows spawning for your entire team, so not just you, not just your squad, but the entire team of 50 people. Squads, uh, sorry, squad leaders must place radios for construction of HABs slash FOBs. So if without a radio, a team cannot build a FOB. Ammo crates, obviously guys, they recharge your ammo, they replace grenades, stuff like that. But also you can change your kit from a medic to a rifleman, a rifleman to a medic, vice versa, and all the other roles. Rally points on the other hand only have 10 spawns and they are just for you and your squad. Only a squad leader can put them down and if a squad leader is playing the squad leader class then he needs one other person near him to be able to place down a rally point so everyone else can then spawn. Rally points are normally placed if you have to walk or run a decent a decent you know distance the rally points are normally placed just outside the area that you're going to be attacking or you're going to be rallying or defending just so that if anything goes wrong you can always respawn there and um re replan now you might be asking yourself if you are brand new what is a squad leader and what is the squad and just the very simple basics as this video is. So these are the different classes that you can have guys inside each of these specialist fire support, direct combat and command and support you have different classes. So a squad leader only one person can pick either squad leader, squad leader with a ACOG scope and squad leader which is a crewman who drives vehicles. Now this is the SAS slash British army so be wary that each class has different, well, each army sorry has different weapons, uh, different amount of classes, stuff like that but all of them are still basic and all of them have the exact same sort of um, sort of feel and load up to them, the actual guns just change. So, in this you can have squad leader, squad leader with an ACOG or a foregrip, or a lead crewman. Now, these are your squad leaders, you guys don't have to worry about playing that at all, uh, and I'll tell you what a squad leader does in a moment, just after we cover the other classes. Medic, you can have two medics on your team, and most squad leaders do require you to have two medics as well. You can have up to nine people in your squad. Direct combat, rifleman, rifleman, automatic rifleman, and a marksman. Then we have fire support, which is an automatic rifleman, a grenadier, a marksman, and a light anti-tank. And then you have specialist, which is a crewman, a machine gunner, or a heavy anti-tank. Okay, so practically, guys, um, a squad leader is totally in charge of you and your squad. You have to listen to them. So it's not like a Call of Duty game or a Battlefield game. It's not even like armor. You have a superior officer here and you've got to listen to them no matter what. If they require somebody to go medic, that means somebody has to go medic. If they want an anti-tank, someone has to go anti-tank. But the good thing about this is that the community in this game is absolutely fantastic. Which means, if you are a brand new player, people will welcome you into the game, they will help you along. And let's say somebody says, um, Grin, can you go anti-tank and I'm brand new to the game? I go, sorry squad lead, I am brand new, can I just stick to rifleman for now? Now, what you need to know is that if you are brand new guys, each specific role, such as a marksman, or an AT, which is an anti-tank, or a um, machine gunner, they all have specific roles and stuff that the squad leader will say to go and do in maybe an acronym or a very quick 
case of communication and they want that result instantly so what you need to do is you need to just play riflemen as you can see here guys these two riflemen classes have the exact same marker they have the exact same symbol and they're the only things you should play as soon as you get into the game feel free to take a scope um, normally you can only have up to one or two riflemen with scopes feel free to take that if you can if someone requests that change then maybe ask your squad leader if you can keep it if you're enjoying it or just give it to them it depends who's asking really uh, and that's for you to judge but you have your entire right to play a rifleman with a scope as a new player and that's what a lot of new players do uh, also without a scope so there are slight differences if you have a scope then you do not have a full grip bipod what i mean by that is that if we go to the shooting range here and lay down and I can press then Z and open up my foregrip bipod I can't lift my sight any higher than this but I have utter accuracy now over the field which is always going to help and always going to be good if I change to rifleman with an ACOG and we do the same I don't get that bipod anymore so, I have a lot less accuracy. Let's go into automatic fire and see. As you can see, guys, it's not bad close range, but if you're trying to hit a target all the way down there, it is going to be a lot, lot difficult, a lot more difficult, sorry, to uh, hit a target at distance without a bipod. But well, that's why you have the scope. So you normally be on single fire and playing that support role on a hill if you have a scope. That is what a squad leader will want you to do okay a few other classes so for example an automatic rifleman also known as a machine gunner as well uh, they are practically the same thing you'd never have one of each and um, they lay down suppressive fire they nearly always have a bipod if they don't then that's absolutely fine you just set up somewhere and your job is to get a coordinate which is at the bottom of your screen guys if you look at your compass as well which is at the bottom of your screen oh god what am i doing here there you go. If you look at the compass, uh, so you've got south, you've got southwest, west, northwest, north, northeast, east, southeast, and back to south. And then you've got uh, your actual coordinates as well. So if a squad leader said to a machine gunner, we've got heavy hostiles, machine gunner at south to 195, can you lay down suppressive fire? That gunner would set up a position, probably on high ground. If not, he'd plant himself down here, and he would randomly... In the direction of enemies, uh, there are signs such as enemy smoke and other signs in the game. Lay down fire over there. This is why basic, normal people that have just got the game do just play riflemen because they don't they aren't comfortable filling them full roles. And it's a very immersive game, and you do feel into it. And whenever your squad leader asks you to do something, your heart does jump a bit, not knowing if or what it's going to be, and you feel very involved and very important like you have a job and if you don't achieve that job it will put the entire squad in jeopardy now let's talk about the chain of command so in the game you have a multiple amount of squad leaders you can have nine people in a squad the squad leaders report to the commander that's a single person who's talking to only the squad leaders and the squad leaders talk among themselves as well so the commander and the squad leaders will devise a plan and a strategy before the game starts or during the game if something goes wrong or if they want to change up their plan and if you need assistance squad two might get sent over to help you in squad one for example so the chain of command is the commander and the squad leaders will talk among themselves to devise a plan the squad leaders will then talk to your squad. You have different radio channels for this. Squad leaders have their own radio channel as well, just for each other. Do not worry about using that at all. What you need to worry about, guys, is using... If you look at the bottom left-hand side of my screen now, um, you can see the blue microphone. If you can see the blue microphone, that means I'm talking in local chat. So there's no radio communication. My player, my in-game character, is talking out of his mouth. So, stuff like terrain um, and hills and just general proximity of your allies will determine if they can hear you or not. You do get quieter the further away you get. There's echo inside buildings, etc, uh, etc. Et Green, now on the other hand, at the bottom left hand side as you can see, is radio chat with your local squad. So, that's squad chat. 
Now, squad chat means the whole squad can hear you. So let's say you're next to your buddy and you want to tell him something or you want to say what you were for dinner last night, for example, or more likely you want to devise a plan how to get from A to B just with you and your squad. You wouldn't say that in squad chat because that's telling everybody and not everybody needs to know. If a squad leader has sent you and somebody else somewhere, you would talk in local chat to that other person just to make sure that you're keeping the airwaves clear because whilst you're talking in squad chat, the other squad leaders might be talking as well. So squad chat is mainly used for if you're in a group together, which you normally are, you're normally within 100 meters, 200 meters of each other. Uh, which, as you can see, from that place where we just were, 100 meters there, 200 meters is a bit of a stretch, but that's normally where you are. So if you're in that sort of proximity, you'd use squad chat, let's say if you spotted an enemy technical or an enemy vehicle. And how you would tell a squad leader that is that you would open up your radio and you would go, Grin has spotted, don't say I. If you say I, that annoys the hell out of a lot of squad leaders simply because they don't know who you are. So if you say squad lead Grin has spotted BTR 200, because that's where I'm looking at right now, 200, 100 meters away, that means that BTR on squad lead is there. He would then open up his map, zoom into us, he'd find Grin, he'd find 100 meters, and he'd put a marker there telling the entire team where there's an enemy BTR. So make sure your information is good. So we've gone over the main basics of the game, but you might have a few questions. If you do, obviously leave a comment down below, but I'm going to try and anticipate some and just answer them now, very simple ones. So, for example, if I've told you you should only play Rifleman you, at the start, you might think, well, how do I progress on to the next class? Do I just go into it? Do I ignore him and just go for it? The answer to that's no. You play Rifleman to get used to the game. After you're used to the game and you're used to what FOBs are and FOBs and supply trucks and logistic trucks, which are a bit more in-depth things, really, which I might make a more advanced video on. But when you get used to that, then you can start using other rollers. And these rolls will come more easily to you simply because you will have known. You will, you will have been next to a machine gun, you will have been next to a marksman, you will have heard them talking over the radio using their own little terminology, their lingo, and you will pick it up as you go along. Obviously, you won't be able to jump into a machine gun roll after you've been sat next to a machine gun for five minutes, but it will take a bit of time, and then you will finally be able to grasp what it is. Honestly, a couple of days... If you're playing this game straight for a couple of days, you'll pick it up quite quickly. It is not the hardest game to understand, but it is a hard game to get into. There are very, very, very few games nowadays that get released that are relentless on new players, but this game is one of them. This game, if anyone knows what Escape from Tarkov is, I made a few videos on that, and that's what urged me to make this video as well. Because that game is so hard on beginners and new players, and I like to pick up them games and learn them, and that's what I've done with Squad today. And I've thought, let's make a beginner's guide, because there's not that many very basic beginner guides, and people can watch some, and then jump into a game thinking they know what's going on, and still not have a clue. So, hopefully this video has given you enough of an idea what to do when getting into a game. And uh, that's just really been my idea and my plan, just to be able to get from someone having nothing to someone having a little bit of information. Um, again, when you spawn in, you have certain spawning points. Um, so this will be the basic screen that you see at the beginning of the game. And you'll have squad and roll. So under here, there'd be alpha, um, and there'd be heavy tank machine gunner, light anti-tank marksman, grenadier, automatic rifleman. Don't pick any of them, guys. They're not for you. Now, squad rolls, rifleman, rifleman, recruit, automatic rifleman, all things that you can play. Definitely don't play marksman or crewman yet. Crewmen are in charge of vehicles. Vehicles are extremely important in this game. And if you lose a vehicle, you lose a hell of a lot of tickets and you can cripple a team if you do it wrong. Also, you need to know the maps because unless you want to drive around like this, then you won't know the map. And you learn the maps just by playing the game, obviously. Um, automatic rifleman. If your squad leader does not require an automatic rifleman or a machine gunner on fire support, you can play that role, but I would just stick to normal riflemen at the moment. But again, feel free to take a scope. 
Um, what we're going to do now guys is I'm just going to take a little quick step through of the weapons and what they are So this is only for the British Army again, and I really wish I could change what I am right now um, but unfortunately in the In the firing range where we are you can't change your Nation as far as I believe but anyway, this is the normal loadout for a rifleman I'm gonna use a scope right now, and you've already seen a couple of firepowers um, a couple of shots sorry from the weapon another thing though that we're gonna cover right now is that rather than most games where you aim with your scope So right now we can see that target with my scope, okay? If I shoot the target, it's good now if I lay down or get a bit of a weirder angle here then not always will you be hitting a target. So I'm not hitting the floor in front of me. I'm hitting the sandbag there. Now, the difference is that in real life, obviously, your weapons don't fire from your scope. But in a lot of games, your weapons do fire directly from your scope. And um, they sort of loop around any obstacles as long as it gets to where the scope is. Now, in this game, your weapon fires directly from your scope. So if I was to zoom in with a sniper rifle from all the way over here and hit a 200 meter target directly on my scope, the bullet drop may actually differ. So let's say I got a pistol and I tried to shoot a 200 meter target. Let's say I had it actually accurate, which is hard enough. That pistol will not reach that target without dropping a little bit and it could miss or could do less damage, for example, hitting an enemy in the legs. So I'm not saying aim here and aim up there and you'll hit them, but I am saying just be wary of bullet drop. It is a genuine thing to be concerned about now. So Grenadier, anti-tank, they have the exact same weapon here. Uh, they have an L85A2. They just have different modifications on them. So they, for example, the Grenadier, for example, has a noob tube grenade launcher. And you might think, well, it's easy to grenade anybody. But if a squad leader is saying uh, Grenadier grenade 125 by 36, you won't have a clue what that means. But that's a coordinate on a map that you need to do. Uh, also, you've got different smokes. And the smoke colors don't have a universal sign yet in the game. But you do need to be able to use your smokes eff efficiently to mark up hostiles and tell them where they are. And then the squad leader can just stick that on the map. So please, just because it's the same gun, do not use Grenadier. It's a very, very important role. Automatic Riflemen have a SWAT or a Mini-Me on British sides. Again, we have a bipod, I do believe. I should think we do. We don't have a bipod. A Mini-Me? I swear a Mini-Me had a bipod. Okay. Well, I know nothing, guys. But... As you can see, the scope sinks into the roof of the scope, and you have some insane recoil. We do have a bipod, there we go. You deploy a bipod, though. And you have got guns for days. And that's what you might be hearing, that sort of sound there. That is um, a suppressing fire sort of sound. And if you hear that for a continuous amount of time, that means... Our machine gunner or our machine gunner on our team will be suppressing fire so that people can move somewhere, move across, or do something. Okay, guys, so what we're looking at here is a technical. Now, I'm playing the heavy anti tank class. Don't worry, this isn't the scope. That would make it way too easy for this game. This is a mounted explosive tow rocket. Now, we're not going to be shooting this technical with this. This technical also has supplies. So, this will be an insurgent technical, uh, not an army technical. And you won't probably won't be seeing them much because not many maps and games have insurgents on them because they are at a unique disadvantage with their weapons and their actual, you know, effort and stuff. Um, they, they are not very strong. But they have plenty of vehicles that are very expendable. This one can carry supplies. And this is a heavy anti-tank um, bazooka here for the SAS slash British Armed Forces. As you can see, one hit makes it go down. But you only have one shot. So if you spot out an um, enemy vehicle, you'd ask squad leader if we have AT. If you already know that we have AT, which is anti-tank, then you would straight away drop to the floor, hope it doesn't see you, and you would tell... The AT that we have from your position, a enemy BTR, an enemy technical. Uh, if you don't know what it is, guys, don't guess. Just say we have an enemy vehicle. And AT will make his way across to you if he has the ammunition. And as you just see that spawn in there, that's what we just blew up, guys. Now, we also have the grenade area. We're not going to be uh, using all the different types of grenades and stuff, guys. But I will be showing you some of the um, 
some of the smoke grenades, how they work, and the actual grenade. So your grenade impact actually is quite a lot. So let's just use that for 15 meters there. As you can see, it absolutely flattened them four targets and the ones at 25. It has a radius, I think, of 30 meters. I believe uh, it might have a radius of 15, actually. I think it has a radius of 15 meters of normal frag grenade in this game, which is based off real life results, I believe. Now, smoke grenades are a little bit different. You right click, you throw them like that. Underarm. You left click, you throw them like that. Now, as you can see, these smoke grenades aren't like the ones from Call of Duty. They take some time to take effectiveness. And we're just going to watch it tick over now, guys. So, if we use it on heavy cover, if we're suppressed, that sort of smoke is okay, sort of, to run through. So, now, we'd make our move if we had to. So, it's around 10 seconds. You give a smoke grenade about 10 seconds, and if you're under, and you and your squad are under a lot of fire, you would wait normally for um, your squad leads to tell you, but a lot of the time they won't because they just don't think of the idea under the pressure, and they've got a lot of people talking to them. So, just say into your squad, squad, pop smokes. Uh, squad lead, can we pop smokes, etc, etc. If you're under the fire, pop smokes near you, pop smokes a bit far further away from where you want to run to. So I would have thrown them smoke grenades now if there was an enemy vehicle over here and I was in cover here. I would have thrown these smoke grenades, waited about 10 seconds for the enemy vehicle to seem to stop shooting and then I'd make my move to my next amount of cover behind the smoke. Don't try and run through the smoke just because if you don't have a decent PC, these particle effects on high graphics um, will sort of kill the PC down a little bit. Uh, also, this game is in alpha. That's probably the biggest con, but I don't see that as a con right now, guys, because it's obviously a very, very good game, and that just means they're going to add more stuff to it. Anyway, that's about it, I think, guys. I think that is the majority of it. These are all the vehicles here, guys, so if you are in the game, if you do own the game, definitely jump into the... Uh, to, to the shooting range and that helps you pick up different distances on the actual shooting range as well because they're all marked up it you know it sort of shows you everything that you need to know about the game um it's a little tutorial area really just without any markers it shows you all the different types of vehicles where they're best effective to be hit um obviously with something like a warrior tank you just want to avoid them at all cost unless you're heavy at if you're light at it's even dangerous to go for one of them uh, unless you've got a top down view which is rare uh, but these are all the vehicles here, guys. If you require, I can always make a vehicle video, a uh, vehicle tutorial, playing as crewmen and show you around the guns and the heavy artillery, if that's a role that you guys discover that you enjoy. I can also go more in-depth and uh, more training exercise. Also, guys, uh, I can always go into real games and just get clips and bits from real games and sort of show you how, how things work there as well. But I hope for now this has sufficed and helped all of you. And thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, any comments, please leave a comment down below. Again, I'm sorry for the length and a little bit of repetitiveness. But this is again for brand new players. People that might have just bought the game off the 40% off sale or the free weekend. And people that are considering it, this is, my, this is me saying, yeah, go for it. It's a great game. The community is amazing. You're always in a squad unless you choose to be on your own, which is bad. Um... And you're always talking. The only requirements, guys, is that you have a good mic and that you are willing to, like, you know, be mature about it and talk well. I, I've not really met any kids on this game. If you are really young, I don't really suggest this game for you simply because I've never really met someone under my age and I'm around 20 now, guys. Um, normally, it's 20 upwards. 20 to 35 is the sort of range for this game. Uh, there's nothing wrong with you buying this game if you are younger. Just make sure that you've got a decent mic and that you're not going to be irritating for other people because it will really affect the game and how people treat you. Um, and it's just, you know, I don't want to sound horrible, but it's just not the game for you guys. Uh, also, if you're a different country, so maybe you're French right now and you're watching this video and you're thinking... This would be great, but my English isn't top, and I, I might not be able to. Uh, my English isn't great, and I might not be able to really gather the 
you know the right information don't worry about it there are servers for germans there are servers for french people spanish um any, every, any country there is sweden servers and they're all set up in them countries as well so the ping is good uh, american servers obviously guys and if you're anywhere in the world pretty much you can play this game with quite a bit of ease uh, thank you very much for watching and i do recommend this game if you have any comments or questions please um like below i'll just post the comments down below you don't have to like the video guys if it didn't help that much but um hit that thumbs up button or that subscribe button and i'll catch you next time have a great day everybody